All right, I think we're ready to go. <laughs> Clap to applaud me actually being here trying to get some work done. But realistically, I'm not doing any work at the moment. I am just stuffing around fixing up these 34, 37 boards. Why? Because it's kind of like sometimes when your brain just doesn't feel like working completely and you like go for the easier puzzles in life. Uh, that's kind of what I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm doing the easy stuff right now. Okay. So this is a new one and it's another FRU board. Or in other words, it's been repaired before. We'll see what's going on. See if we have anything interesting happening. Good evening to everybody. Oh, Santa's here. Well, not going to be good for Santa. I buy my own presents. So that empowers me to do whatever the heck I want. Hey, load them. Okay, let's see. Power supply on. Andrew, Barry, Patrick, Ed, Chris, Gerhard Ackerman, good evening, and William Vasco, or is that Vasco? Okay, so, green light, appropriate power consumption, This probably works. It works. We're done. <laughs> no, we'll see what's going on. This likely has been pulled from a machine for a particular reason, so we'll have to see what it is. It's probably just corrosion. Hey, John and Solaris. Hey, Aiden. Oh, Mr. Newton's here. Hello, Oz. Mountain biking kid. That's a bit of an unusual name to have in here. Anybody catch the arrival of Big Clive on Lewis's stream today? That was a nice to see visit. Fortunately, the chap didn't get too mobbed. Yeah, this definitely has been reworked. There's usually a sort of blob, silicon blob there. That's not there. Now uh, the head's doing well. The stitches came out today, so everything is good. This is quite unusual, actually. Uh, the thing that strikes me here is that normally we have the 10 ohm and the 4.7 ohm resistors, and they're marked because they're large ones. But these have been replaced. So I'm going to guess previously on Paul Daniel's repair. Now, previously on this board's life, it had this 342 section repaired. Oh, mounting bucket, it's all good. Just more interesting to see the different names. Uh, so, so yes, very lucky with the head accident. All good. It's obviously going to be tender for a few weeks now, a few months even. But it, after a while, it'll get back to being normal. Hey, Kenny Wooden. Prove it. What do I need to prove? And this is the evil sticker. We don't like seeing those white stickers. And there is always thermal transfer compound on my boards. Little chunks of it. Electric Longboard Boomer. Is that going to be your cool name? Maybe this... Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Spoke too soon. I was about to say, maybe this board's fine, but no. Okay. So we've got a, um, a... Basically an array of resistors here that are chewed out with corrosion. And I'm not quite sure what sort of strapping they do, but yeah, it'll be something to do with the RAM. But that's probably our fault. Oh, wait. And there's some more, and that's taken out that resistor there. There is actually a resistor there, or something there. And it's a goner. Oh, nothing on the SM... Kind of unusual. This sort of corrosion, it's... I don't know what to make of it. I don't know how it sort of got there. 
It's almost like it. It's almost like it was there on the original board. They repaired it, and you can see they've like brushed over here too. They've got brush marks. I'm trying to clean it, and they missed that, and they missed the um, corrosion there. And they probably sent this back to Apple and said, "There you go, board's good." Oh, okay, HS105. Definitely, that's. If there's going to be a problem, that will really be a big one. That controls power to the PCH. Bit of corrosion there. Seems like every time I look over this board, it gets worse. SMC is fortunately perfect. All right, so I've got three different locations. Sorry I've missed the live videos, a ton of key fobs and Exxon X repairs. Well, you know, as long as you got stuff to do, that's what matters. I mean, it's nice to sit around and have the entertaining stuff, but at the end of the day, you've got to make a dollar. And I'm certainly not going to begrudge anyone for going out there and making a dollar for themselves. Hey, B-Blood. I see you made it. Okay, so let's get this 105 section out of the way. This is actually a comparatively common area for the corrosion. Hey, Dadamras, stop looking at <laughs> Yeah, just turn a blind eye to the circuit board and it's uh, not going to develop any more faults. A 3x. It was good to see Lewis doing some repairs this morning. I know it's difficult, to, yeah, for him to keep doing that. Well, I give him, uh, give him props for trying, and give him props for still dishing out the crap on me. I see he's started uploading old videos too. APR. Uh, there appears to be a large area of corroded board there, I think. Yep, there is. See how when I just sort of push down on it, it crumbles away that surface. And you can see the discoloration, or at least, can you? Maybe if it was in focus. F -f 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 focus. No, Paul, that's the zoom, mate. I don't know if it comes up on camera, but there is a distinct darkening here and all around here. And it's where something's got beneath this coating and the copper. Or between, I should rather say. And you have to break that back. Otherwise it will just sit there and re-emerge later. I gotta say, this one's actually a bit tougher than usual. Hey, Toast Tech. Oh, that looks suitably cleaned up. So even though this board did boot, it was a good example of why you really should check the boards even if they boot. Because often it can be just merely a coincidence, you know, just a bit of good luck. On the upside, at least it lets you know that, hey, I'm alive and I've just got a little bit of damage on me. And you know that your efforts to fix it should be rewarded. As opposed to when you get boards and you wonder whether you should be investing the time in them. Or it's just going to be another sad, sad story at the end. The 
There's probably a few people wondering why I'm bothering with these boards. Well, I guess part of it's just, you know, skill practice to a small degree. And then, you know, maybe they'll be useful somewhere. Maybe someone needs one of these boards. Hey Jessica Ryan, how are you? Um, just continuing on with the 3437s, this one actually starts just fine, but we know that that was a lie. And we dug around and we found a few points of corrosion. Good morning Arnold, have you got your coffee? Ach, niemand. I hate it when that happens. So the flux just gives up. Oh, it's looking good to me. Now the real trick for me is to find a board that actually still has those two parts left on it because it is, like I said, a fairly common fault. And subsequently, pretty much every board I've got tends to be missing those two parts. Oh, looks like I've got a winner here. Afternoon, Keith. Oh, these people with their morning coffee. You all sicken me. Because obviously it's um, quarter to one in the morning here. I am up a little bit late because I went a little bit crazy with the garden work today. I did about two hours of mowing and I took a truckload of um, dried up branches and stuff like that down to the dump and then I filled the truck up with another load of branches. So I've been, I was quite busy and it was 39 today and very humid. So it was probably a little bit stupid of me and I sort of got touched with a little bit of, I wouldn't say heat stroke, but certainly I got a little bit hot. And subsequently after I had my shower and took my antihistamine. I just crashed. I crashed until about 9 p.m. So that was about 8 o'clock. So a good, good hour, hour and a half of sleep. And subsequently, I'm not going to sleep quite so well tonight. And I'm definitely just, I want to have the coffee, but I can't have a coffee. I think the worst thing is when you watch movies late at night and the movies have the morning sort of morning scenes in them or something like that and you get these happy people walking down the street with their fresh hot cups of coffee and you're like damn it I want a coffee and so uh, addiction quite likely. Ed boss, yes, definitely a much needed rest. Things are doing better recently. We found how to stop uh, Momo, or Milo rather. We sort of worked out how to stop him disturbing us too much at night. We have to, this is gonna sound strange, but we have to actually spend time and cuddle and talk to him in his bed when he's ready to go to sleep at night. So he will come up to me and he will like, I want to go to sleep. Oh no, do not tell me my tip has died. Oh no, that's the wail of death. Okay, what's basically just happened is my micro pencil tip it's suddenly come up saying SE, which is not a good sign. 
the whale of death that's really going to chafe my happiness okay. so we're going to have to do some diagnosis here first thing we're going to do is test another lead uh, another iron uh, not iron another tip Let's see we've got my JSO2 uh, well, JSO2 is all excited now it's like finally my time to shine again it's only been hanging up there for the last six months barely used but I'd say yeah, the tip's probably dead alright so the JSO2 is fine Damn it, I'm not going to be able to get a tip here fast enough. <sighs> hmm. If you're wondering what I'm looking for, I'm actually looking for the temperature resistant silicon. Oh, you know what? I've got a mat right here. They're such small tips. Okay, let's push back in. I'm hoping it just sort of like got drawn out slightly. No such luck. Damn it. Alright, well, that'll learn me for not having a spare on hand. So it's back to the old days of the JSO2. That was a blast from the past. Let's see if we have what it takes to solder with massive equipment. Well, that feels very strange handling the the large tip again. Very strange. A ten minute tick. Get out of my face. Uh, we found the teenager in the chat. I uh, figure if I order one tonight, or this morning I should rather say, it might be dispatched Wednesday, which means it might get here Friday if a miracle occurs. Oh, this is, wow, this thing's huge. How did I ever solder with this in the past? Uh, it's not looking overly good there. There's a lot of blood coming out of that board. Hey, DeAndre. 
And this is entirely my own fault. I knew it was about time for me to get a replacement or a standby. And, you know, I've got plenty of, plenty of money to get one. But do you think I got myself one in preparation? No, of course not. Half the problem is, I probably was sitting there thinking, mm, should I buy myself another FX951 with that? Just so at least I'm putting the postage cost to good use. Because that is another legitimate thing that I'm worried about, is that maybe at some point I should have a backup for my soldering station. Because it's one thing to have a tip value on you, at least you can sort of work your way around that. But when the station itself goes on you, you're kind of in a bad situation. Yeah, those pads are atrocious. Let's hope we've got something there that we can use. I might get a handle as well. So I have two handles and I'll order two tips. So two handles, two tips and maybe another FX951. Oh, this is, wow, this is bad. This might be donor level actually. Well, we'll see, we'll see. But that's really bad corrosion there. There's no, none of that trace is left. Now uh, they're all gone too. I think this one may actually just be a donor. It's not so much I'm copying out, it's more a case of this is a low grade 3437. So, what spec was this one? Yeah, so, it's a 1.3 gigahertz, 4 gigabyte RAM. We're better off just claiming it as a donor. Try JBC station. I've got no compelling reason to especially at the double or two and a half times the cost it's hard for me to justify getting a JBC Hey Gonzalo, good evening Yeah, if there was a clear and distinct reason, uh, gain in picking one up then I would consider it but yeah, I have a hard time justifying that so it's a shame, you know, we've got a perfectly good SMC, CPU clearly works, but the damage on those resistor, that resistor pack there, yeah, there's basically nothing left of those pads, I would have to reconstruct everything, and like I said, I just can't make the case, as it were, to do it. Because even the veers are, I'll have to chase those veers because the pads are, yeah, they're all gone. That pad's still there. That pad's almost, there. no, it's gone. It's all blood underneath. They're all blood. FM203, I did look at that in the past as a dual output station for the tweezers but I've been watching a lot of people use the tweezers and again I can't I can't make the justification for tweezers okay we're actually going to tick this because the CPU is good so just in case I need to use the CPU I doubt I ever would I mean yeah but we will mark it as a donor. The RAM itself should be good, SMC, all the other parts. Just we can't justify making this a um, anything but a donor. Alright, let's get the next one.
Hey GD Tech, good evening. Hey Stegs. Yeah, maybe if you work at a commercial microelectronics repair place, you know, with dozens of people or whatever, and you've got a good amount of money to toss around, then yeah, maybe the JVC gives you that extra 10% ease and um, improvement. But like I said, it's very hard for me to justify at this point. Okay, so we've got a 1.44, so again, not exactly the most amazing board, but still see what we can do. At least we've got a donor if we need it. Um, I'm more just hurt at the moment about the loss of that tip. Okay, let's see what we got. Powers up. 600 is about right. It's like this one's also a looper. I mean, a booter. Yep, that one also works. So again, we go digging in for corrosion issues. And if we can't find corrosion issues, then yeah, maybe it's a USB port issue or display output issue. Although that usually is corrosion, which is pretty much what we just found there. That's typically a test point that doesn't go anywhere though, but important to note that there is corrosion there. What about on the actual... That's interesting, is it? Piece of glitter. Always glitter. Don't know why glitter infests electronics so much. I'm wondering if this is in fact actually a bad display output, because we do have yeah, corrosion there. A bit of corrosion on that cap. Do we have a valid fuse? Hey, Ron Rogers. Good morning. Fuse is good. I sort of get in the habit of checking these things after being caught out running around with my head nearly coming off only to find that I had a dead fuse. There's an interesting color tone on the camera connector there indicating it's been subjected to some kind of heat. I don't think it's anything to do with the fault, it's just more like interesting that it's got that um, tempered copper tone, uh, gold tone on it. This resistor here, it's a little bit of corrosion on it, but no, nothing yet. Could this just be a perfectly working board? We'll stick it in a case and have a look. Maybe it has charging issues. No, this has got SMC issues. Oh, big time. Hey, Prakash? Or is that Prakash? I can never... I don't know. But that SMC is Cactus. It might be working now, but that's that's going down the drain. Hey, Harold, CMI Zappa. USB tests will also find bad USB ports. Yes, yes it will. But I'd say in this case, we probably have an SMC that's intermittently misbehaving. We also have salt crystals. These are sodium chloride salt crystals by the looks of it. So yeah, that needs an SMC replacement. Uh, the question is, do I want to do an SMC replacement? Or do I want to find another board? We'll just put that one off to the side slightly. See if we can find something that actually requires a little bit of detective work. Rather than, it works, just change the SMC. Uh, 
another one that just powers up. And that one also works. Right. We're going to see if we can find one that doesn't just magically boot. Oh, this one looks like it's got some lurking unwelcomeness. Yeah. Okay, this one's got some problems. We're sitting at 190 milliamp and we're not cycling. So, alright, we found one that doesn't give us the easy start. First thing we'll check, do we have viable CPU? Evening Alex. 175 ohms, what? That can't be right. Hundred and seventy two ohms? That seems a little crazy. Hundred and thirteen. Well, maybe hundred and seventy two isn't that crazy, but just it seems a little high. Alex, it seems like I missed part of the conversation there, but I'm guessing... Oh, it's Paul Howe that's saying, right. Uh, Paul Howe, sorry to hear about that. Uh, sort of... That's always... Well, uh, yeah. And not to take away anything from the situation you're dealing with right now. But, um in two weeks it will be a year since we um, started the process of losing my father so um, now this is one of these things that you know it's there's that inevitability and it happens and then you have to yeah we all try find our way through each day after that Uh, this is just a general rat's nest with perhaps too much corrosion. Evening Blazing Magazine. Alright, so it's 190. I'm a little worried about the fact that this one is all messed up, but We've definitely probably got BIOS issues there. And then there was... Da, 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 there was that with a piece of metal on it. We'll clean that up first. Hey, Flying Scar. I'm going to be curious to see whether I can get a replacement tip and stuff from another supplier, but I have a feeling there's only the one supplier in Australia. 
Yeah, that cap looks fine actually. The one supplier in Australia that most of us all use is Mechtronics for Hacko gear. And I don't know whether they've got an exclusive import deal with Hacko. It's not uncommon in Australia for that sort of thing to happen, which is why we get royally screwed in prices. I know with uh, model aircraft stuff, there is a there was a company. I don't know if they still exist, but anytime any new product would come out, they would tie the product up in a exclusive importer agreement, and so nobody else in Australia could bring the stuff in. And subsequently, for a great number of decades here in Australia, you would always be paying right out through the sensitive orifices for your model aircraft equipment. I mean, great business strategy by them, but it hurt the living daylights out of the industry, out of the hobby. Uh, you know, profit before ethics. That's fundamentally what it comes down to. I think that SMC board looks easier. Yeah, well, it does in some ways, but... Oh my goodness, this... Oh, my brain has... is going to have a hard time readjusting to this tip. So I'm definitely going to have to... get something ordered ASAP. How did I even use this before? Uh, I guess I did. I guess we all did, really. I asked for some different kind of practice, and well, I got it. Just wasn't the kind of practice I was expecting to be a different kind of practice. Market control, that should not be... It. Yeah, I don't know how they legally did it, but they it was legal, as far as I could tell. And yeah, we were. Ah, oh, that's a 165 donor. Damn it. Yeah, we were um, stuck with it. Yeah, Andrew, I'll be picking up two. As I was thinking, I'll picking up two. I might pick up another handle and I might pick up another station. Aaron Summers, been a couple of years, really, have I been doing this for that long, that now you can actually say that it's been a couple of years, that's kind of depressing. I'm just going to make sure I repair the right board here, because in this case, the board we're repairing is actually worse than the board that we're taking donor parts from. JCT in here. Hello JCT. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Up, up, up. Did I just lose that leg? That corrosion still my leg. Certainly trying to.
Let's see, CMI Zapper, I use the analog JVC, much cheaper and who cares about digital display? Yeah, that's very true about the digital display, but it's so cool. And you've got to have the cool stuff. Because you're right, when, once you set it and you're just simply pulling the tip, like, you know, I've got to be, damn it, I've got to be careful about how I say things on YouTube. But yeah, once you're using the device, like I am now, just grabbing it, and then you don't really look at the display. In fact, I probably haven't really looked at the display of my Hacko in months. To give you an idea, the JBC equivalent of what I have at the moment, or well, you know, superior version, is in the region of two thousand Australian dollars. Last I checked, as opposed to the Hacko, which is five hundred dollars. So you can sort of see why I'm a little reluctant to dump the equivalent of four Hackos into it. I mean, I understand that uh, with somewhat diminishing returns you just got to get the right chip um, yeah you do get a superior return on investment with a higher investment I should say but I'm not sure I can come up with a four times return Especially when I've got to go spend that money on gazebos and wood chippers and <laughs> lawn mowers, chainsaws. And save up for a Tesla. Hey creature, how's it going? Those who don't know, one creature is a long time known friend of mine, well, associate, whatever he wants to sort of say. Very good with his electronics and designs and photography. He does everything. I don't believe he's got a channel. I don't know what the channel number name is exactly off the top of my head. But um, he does plenty of interesting things. He's also a lot of model aircraft stuff including crashing model aircraft, because that's what we all do. Damn it. Oh, there you are. It went back on its own. Devote a pole star. Ah. I'll probably I'll probably end up with a Tesla simply because of support for it here. Maybe by the time I'm ready, the Tesla 2 will exist, if it ever does exist. I'm not sure if they're going to go for that market. My dog has a more coherent channel than I do. <laughs> well, you know, pet channels are very popular. We've been watching the uh, Ottoman and such from Japan. It's quite fun to watch that watching those otters go about their river life with the people. It's kind of like a cross between a dog and a cat, those things. But not in the fox kind of way. Oh, creatures got a pole star too. They still suck at fast charging. But then you barely drive anywhere, don't you? It's a frozen wasteland where you live most of the year. I thought you all just travelled through underground tunnels to each other's houses. I've seen the videos of people trying to drive in. What the freaking heck? What is going on here? Oh, that's quality. 
that is quality. <laughs> hey, Ratmole. Hanna Katara and what is it? Yui and um, Ari. Is it Yui and Ari? No. What is going on here? We have a resistor under a capacitor and they seem to be correctly there so I'm not sure what to think of this. I, if I had to say if this is out of factory my guess is that resistor is some random value that fell off somewhere else before the board yeah, got picked up off the conveyor belt or something like that and then this capacitor which is meant to be there got put down so I would say this resistor is not missing from anywhere else it's just surplus to needs but it's very interesting that this has happened in factory Addy and Yui that's it oh my wife's here hello Alita <laughs> she must have heard that I was talking about the otters and she thought she'd jump in and ensure that I say everything correctly well and this is definitely factory this is not from the rework that they've done because this is a reworked board this is factory this needs to be captured in beautiful detail because we need to have it as a reference of how things can go wrong on the assembly line do note that this is not limited to Apple Anyone who's done circuit board manufacturing will know that this sort of thing does occasionally happen. But I know everybody's going to use this now as like, look, Apple sucks. But I can tell you, you will get this probably more on other boards John you cannot ask questions like that yeah that's definitely factory I wonder what value that is Yes, John, I'm not quite as under the pump as Lewis is when it comes to chat. It gives me a chance to see what everybody's writing, or most people. <laughs> Odd that optical verification didn't catch it there. That is true, Creature, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's definitely factory. I was trying to get an idea what value this is, but it's admittingly been at the... You know what, when it comes to trying to get values on these things, it's just easier to solder them back onto something. Or I might try to jam it against this. Three twenty nine kilo ohms. Three twenty So that would be a 330, that's probably a 330 standard resistor, 330k, and what is that, that's a 201 size, oh well, so long 330k, you were completely of no use. You do have to be careful though, making the assumption that that is actually a 330, I mean it probably was, it was well within the 1%. But there are resistors on these boards that have very specific values like that. Uh, let's see, 34, 37. I think there's, where is it? Um, 342 generation has a very unique set. Pardon me. And so does, I think, um, Power Detect. Let's have a look.
Okay, so 348, it obviously wasn't that. But yeah, you get values like this 604k and uh, 715k, 54.9k. So you do get obscure values like that periodically in situations where they, you know, that's obviously where the math went. But um, I would definitely say this is 330k. Seems sus, right? Yep. Let's see how many of those we got. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got 11 330Ks, but then probably not all of them. Yeah, that's a no stuff. So, anyway, that was interesting. Can you bring out the bomb sorted by value? Not on this, no. I can only just dig through the schematic and do that sort of analysis afterwards just by the search results. Uh, what else we got? So we picked up, picked up, fixed up the BIOS, fixed up that chip, which actually is what's that? U seventy six hundred. Yeah, that's the one hundred five supply. So it gets generated through there and gets pushed up through there. That cap's a little funky, but it's probably just surface. Oh, I just noticed that. A corrosion there. This here is the temperature sensor. So we... P I wonder if that... I'll test to see if it boots now. But if it doesn't, I do wonder if maybe that, depending on what that pin is, it might be telling everything that... No, we can't turn on. We're on fire. In which case, it probably belongs in a printer so it can tell the printer server that it's on fire. Such a signal does exist. Hey, Pachamba Welby. You need to add highlight mode so you can highlight on the board view all the matching values. Yeah. Damn it, creature, you just made me now add that into my feature to add list even though that's probably a feature that very few people would ever actually use so damn you for making me write more code bloating my software creating more bugs all because you made that suggestion okay that jumped off too quickly and we'd let's see how we go The timing of the stop start stop start seems to be a little bit weird but it is running so we have fixed that fault but I am gonna fix that temperature chip did magpie get your hair Arnold G no instead it was a big slab of wood big slab of wood raced up uh, blah 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 see it attacked my brain too big slab of wood was hiding behind a mulberry tree and it jabbed me in the scalp with its pointed corner while I was fixated on mowing the grass. That happened last week and I just got the stitches out tonight or yes, today rather. Put back the dodgy factory filter. I'm not going to do that. I want this thing to work. This is now a PC board, not an Apple board. This has been rescued from the crazy Jihad people. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to push my air up to 95 or 90 instead of this 85 business. To be fair, this chip, it's right under the CPU, so it does take a very long time to get up to temperature. There we go. 
add a feature to lock up whenever Lewis opens to avenge you. Oh. Yeah, I really do want to add special features just to show my loving international care for Lewis. But the trouble is, he'll probably just... Yeah, it'll go wrong. Trust me, it'll go wrong. He'll probably be doing a TV interview, CNN or something like that. Not that he'd ever be on CNN, but yeah, he'd probably be doing an interview. And he's probably singing for once glowing praises about my software. And he'll say, look, let me show you. And then it'll come up with something like, yeah, who knows what, we'll either Rick Roll or I'd put in uh, Pepe something and it'll be just at the inappropriate time because that is how the universe likes to play with me and of course it'll be a live TV special ah oh, GD Tech it's, it's alright it's just um Typical stupid accident. I wasn't watching where I was going, and I um, yeah collected the corner of the wood. I'm very thankful it was just a glancing blow, and you know just split the scalp open a bit rather than anything more severe. It was only three stitches. which is significantly less than what I've had before right next to it. This is definitely not my first head wound. Oh, I hate it when this one gets stuck. This one's a pain because like I was saying before, it's an area that's quite hard to get up to temperature. There we go. I think, I think, I think. Yep, we're good. Trigger auto update dialogue that connects to server and takes ages every time, only for Lewis. If people are so full of bad, good ideas. Was I ambushed? I was indeed ambushed, yes. The mulberry tree was distracting me. Lewis will never update his software. You know, he's actually, as far as I understand, he's locked out everybody from touching his software. Even the godlike Paul S. cannot gain that level of access. And yet, he will update his Tesla software so he can get heat back. It seems a bit hypocritical to me. We're just filleting the solder joins on this. We don't really have to. They are connected underneath. But aesthetically, it, it's nicer to fillet them. Even the plant life. Oh, believe me, yeah, the plant life does. There's some nasty suckers out there. The um, there's a plant up in the rainforest which is particularly annoying. And you grab onto it and you then experience this tremendous pain for a great deal of time. And it takes many months to recover. Alright, I think we're good. Yep, this one's good for the ultrasonic clean as well now. A triple five. Winter there is still mild compared to what winter is here. Oh yes, I mean winter's very mild here. I don't think we've ever seen anything below two up here, and that's two centigrade, not two Fahrenheit, but two centigrade. Uh.
Ah, uh, what are we? Oh, ooh, ah, right. Okay, bit of a change. We got a 165 this time. If you look up the Australian stinging nettle bush, I think it is. That's the one I'm talking about. It's basically... It's a fairly innocuous looking broadleaf plant. And it just looks like it's got this lovely hair on it. But the hair are actually just gazillions of these little ultra sharp needles. And you grab it and they all just go into and they release a toxin, and uh, it's great stuff. Stuff and nightmares. Okay, 165, and it doesn't have a shattered PCH, so there's hope yet. We get that here in Florida too. I think it is stinging nettle. Or if I think of something else. Uh, this works. This works, or it's one of those horrible, never working ones. Alright. 450. That works. Bloody hell. Where's the fun in that? Alright, let's have a look at this one, see what's going on. Hey Rose Electronics. Ticking along, ticking along, keeping alive. Stitches are out of the head, so much happier. So now I can actually sleep at night, wake up in the morning, run my hands through my hair, and not snag onto the stitches and curse and sweat. Obviously it's a little tender still, and it will be for a while, but the worst is over. Okay, so this is a 1.64, almost a useless 165 in all honesty. And I'll be honest, this looks downright near immaculate. Oh sure, it's got some typical junk on it, but realistically this looks downright near immaculate. It's almost like this one was an upgrade or something or rather was removed to be replaced by an upgrade I'm kind of curious what creates these shadows here you see there's is it show off there? yeah you can see them there's like this darkened area around a few of the parts like you particularly see it on like here on the ram chips I'm not sure if it's darker or if it's just matte rather than gloss. Anyway, I'm not sure what causes that. What process it is. How long does it take to become a pro? Good question. I'll let you know if I ever get there. Technically speaking, by the definition of a professional, it takes no time at all. All you have to do is charge someone. As soon as you start charging someone for your services, you are by definition, a professional. Doesn't mean you're a good one though. We'll check the fuse in case this is a backlight issue. Steve K, nothing wrong. Yeah, it does feel that. And it's fine. Yeah, this one seems to be quite okay. I will check the other USB port just in case. So I will take Harold's USB chipmunk and put it in the other side and see that it lights up properly. Hey Wayne Taylor, what's your filthy mouth talking about tonight? Oh, we're talking about being professionals. <laughs> the 
thing that wigs me out here is the current's pretty low. 300 now, but it is a low spec board, so. Hmm. Well, that's running best I can tell. Another one ready for the ultrasonic. Oh, so we're pretty much halfway through the stack. So another 165. This one looks like it has been glanced at by me. This is... I wonder if this is the one that just has this sad little false boot of death. 1.88 this is a very top end unit so hopefully we can actually get this one to work but I have a strong feeling this is the sad failure one I hope not but I suspect it is Pick and place machine flux is d mm, very square and distinct and repeated. 56 million, 55 million. Well, we actually have hope here, folks. We have strived all night, and it looks like we may have found a suitable contender for the evening's battle. So we have 37 milliamps, we've got nothing coming up, we do not have a destroyed PCH, please start that way, and it's a high end 1.8 gigahertz 165, so this is the golden child. And let us hope that it turns into the living. Alright, so with a uh, very low current like that, you often first will thing is we do get uh yeah, we might have a short on PP bus PP bus so we go to continuity mode I just like problems well that is true creature I mean you would know all the experience from model aircraft okay we've got 3k or so on one side 3k okay so the fuse is fine yes the fuse is good now we did get an orange light so we know 342 should be good I'm gonna visually check first and if I can't spot anything visually I will then do voltage tests. Say dock leaf takes the sting away. I have you used them and I can't sting them. So do you have dock leaf? Dock leaf. Is that like elephant leaf? Because we do have we do have the elephant leaf plant, which is a plant that has a very high level of oxalates in its sap which means normally it's an extreme irritant for us but it can neutralize the stinging nettle toxins and interestingly it does tend to grow near the stinging nettle too this better not be a dead CPU I'll be much sad if it's dead CPU now, I don't like the fact that there's all this fluxy stuff underneath the camera DDR. Alright, there we go, folks. Ah, uh, shh. Okay. It has big leaves. Okay, elephant ear plant. That, I think that's pretty much similar to what we're think, talking about. Alright. What we're looking at here is bad news. Because this is the, you can barely make it out there, it's the TPS51980 chip, and it controls the voltages to the CPU. And so, with that statement, you can understand why my heart has fallen like a rock off a cliff. Let us see what the resistances are for the CPU. Hmm. 
much sadness if this is dead. Okay, so we are getting 11 ohms, so it hasn't specifically punched through the CPU. But, like I said, it's unfortunately quite common for when that gets corroded, the game is over. But we'll see. It may have fortunately just corroded on some section that doesn't matter. Let's see. Let's have a look at this plant. Okay, that, that is different, uh, broadly top here, that is different to what we have. Now, the one we have, we call it elephant ear plant, but um, it may be the similar sort of thing. Do they, does it have a very um, viscous white sap in it? Hello Marson, didn't see you come in there, and Adrian Glasser. Yeah, well, all we can really do is take this chip off, since the CPU is actually registering a sane resistance. If anything, I would have said it's actually quite a little bit high for this particular model. There are some other little bits of corrosion, we'll fix that up too. I see other people with their workstation, the hot air stations when they do this sort of work and they seem to be able to heat the chip up in an instant like yeah, none of this dragged out business that's going on here and you know, like I said I'm running at 460 and 85 percent air so I might have to jump up a little bit yeah we do some damaged traces there Wrap your heart in a parachute. Uh, might need to. Might need to. We know how this often plays out, unfortunately. It's like my schoolyard romance days all over again. Buoyed into euphoria because of a sideways glance and a misinterpreted smile and suddenly crashing down when you see her snogging off with some other jerk and you're like, that jerk should be me I personally blame American movies for my unrealistic expectations of how school romances were meant to go It's also the very important thing there is that I'm blaming someone else, not myself. Of course things worked out perfectly fine in the end. Damn it. Looks like my eyeballs are a little bit out compared to the camera tonight, I'm sorry. Uh, Jessica Ryan, I have the Atom 862. I did have the Quick before that. Now, there's no particular reason, no technical reason why I picked up the Atom this time. The only thing that swayed my decision was the availability. Even the cost didn't swing me. It was just a case of availability. My Quick was starting to exhibit symptoms of a failing heater element. Cough. Right, that's better. Secret engineer, how's your glider flying going? Or did you go down the rabbit hole when designing glider, X-File, and why 
the wingtip choice. Oh boy. Um, now the last glider I designed, of course, was the quick flick, the discus launch, 1.2 meter, all balsa, well, mostly balsa. I did, most of the time I was just working on which section to use, and I ended up with the, um, oh geez, what did I know, was the AG36 or something like that? I can't remember. There was a few around, and there was the one that they used for the, um, the uh, a few others, the Driller, I think it was, and I found it just didn't work out for me, and so I think I went for the AG or AD36 or something like that. And the trick was that you couldn't afford to fly the quick flick slow like the um, Mountain Models Driller. You had to fly fast, and when you when you let the quick flick fly fast you got a vastly superior glide rate, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the Driller. Oh wait, no, Driller was the name of the guy that um, was doing the sections. Damn it, memory faded. Come on, that's like 15 years ago now. They still sell my glider too. Have you still got yours, creature? You still got your quick flick too? Because I haven't. I've got none of them left. I did want to do a revision on the design to vastly improve the um, the center section for the wing because I never liked that construction, and I also want to, by default, change the um, fuselage assembly. And there were some. Uh, what do you call it, aftermarket kits that we made up to do a better fuselage, but I never managed to get the wing section done, but the, yeah, the center join section. It was just so cumbersome, I hated it. It really ticked me off, but back then, you know, it was a four week turnaround time between when I would design it on CAD send it off and get mountain models to cut it for me and they would send it back and then I'd build it and find it didn't match in somewhere and so you'd send it off again. If I was to ever do that sort of stuff again I would make sure I do have a laser cutter in-house because the turnaround time was just stupidly slow. It wasn't, um, wasn't the fault of the service doing the cutting, it was just the reality of, well, shipping stuff from the United States to Australia. A Peter A, 1466. Creature, I still have an unassembled kit and my assembled one is still good. Wow, you really do take care of your stuff. Yeah, I sort of stepped out when quads were just really becoming a thing, when people basically realized, okay, look, we can't do this too well with 80 megas and people were picking up the STM 32s instead. That is about the time which I had to stop and run. I'm kind of sad I missed out on a large portion of the quad game. But yeah, these things happen in life. And I gotta admit though, if I'm getting back into things, I would probably first up buy another discus launch glider, just a pre-made one, and a nice chunky helicopter. <laughs> I don't want a quad, I want a helicopter. Uh, I very much enjoy the insanity involved in flying a helicopter. At least now we get the fly barless um, systems, which is fantastic. Jessica Ryan over Paraglider, cool. Flying around the sky is amazing, how high you go is awesome. Well, everything looks like, a, oh yeah. Yeah, unfortunately I'll be stuck on the ground squinting up into the sky trying to see my stuff. What other discus launch gliders have you got, creature, other than the quick clip?
I was very surprised at how popular it was. Because, you know, it was just a bolster thing. And I was, I gotta admit, it was more, for me, it was an engineering exercise. Because, you know, people said, you know, you can't make a discus launch glider out of bolster. And I was like, challenge accepted. And, I mean, apart from the boom, I think it's acceptable that the boom was not bolster. We had to do that in carbon. But I was very happy at how it came out. I ended up donating the rights to it to Mountain Models to because of the support they you know, gave me and everything like that. And when I sort of stepped out of the market, I was like, you know what? You can have the full license of the kit now. And that's a little skew. It's not acceptable. I mean, there's a little bit of money I've obviously lost. And it's quick flick too for discus. Everyone else is either motor or bungee. Oh, bungee, cool. Uh, Omer, I don't do training like that. I do videos, and that's pretty much it. Uh, videos or repairs. If you want things fixed, they send them to me. Or at least, supposedly fixed. If they want to learn stuff, they can watch videos. Or oh, there's so many other content creators out there producing excellent materials. But I do not do student, teacher type things. Unless, unless they're really hot. No, just kidding. Yeah. We don't do that around here. Unless they're really hot. <laughs> All right, let's see if we've got a living CPU on this. The leader's going to smack me over the head now. So you're such a jerk. And I don't know why I gave her an American voice just then, but well, yeah, the brain is a strange thing when under stress and panicking. Hopefully she'll forgive me and love me. Hot professionals, that's the one, yep. All right, let's see how we go. Take care, B-Blob. I'll see you next time. Secret engineer, currently building a two and a half meter electric glider, four piece wing, detachable, boom, hoping it'll fit in a viola case. Okay, that's like a string instrument, isn't it? Have heli twos too costly to fix and file. Yeah, that's the thing with helicopters, isn't it? It's like every time you transition out of hover, it's like you just start throwing fifty dollar notes every thirty seconds. It's like, yep, yep, another fifty, another fifty. Yeah, you know, doesn't even matter if you land properly. Things just wear out. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, two and a half meter electric glider. So you've got a uh, polyhedral wing, have you, or have you got a flat center and just um, a single uh, tip to hedral? Come on, Paul, do student teacher teach? No, I'm not going to do that. Maybe maybe in the new Oblivion Cat World series we're going to do. And then you yeah, can do like a prehistoric schoolyard. No, you, you people are just sick and wrong. Sick and wrong. I'm out of here. No, leaving that alone. Let us see if this 165 is now going to be. Oh! Guess what? PCH is dead. <laughs> Damn it. Ah, the PCH is dead. Very dead. Damn it. What went wrong? Same place it always dies. Same place, every time. When the PCH dies, that's where it dies. Okay, what did I do wrong? What did I miss? 
or was the fault already there and restoring the TPS just simply took it out uh, I'm upset about that I mean look we knew it was highly likely it was a dead CPU but why damn it well that was spectacular at least Yeah, definitely exp <laughs> definitely exploded. I hope it was in focus. The other thing is, where do all the pieces go? Have I breathed them in? No, I cannot find any of those pieces of um, die top anywhere. Shame we didn't do that on the microscope, huh? <sighs> Would it cause a fire if you left the power in? No, it will not. Chip the correct way. Pretty sure TPS goes that way. Yeah, orientation's correct. I said there. Okay, I mean that's the 3437, but the 165 is should be the same. Yep, yeah, one six five. It's also down there. Stuck to the heat sink. There was no heat sink. That was the thing, it was done open open air. I really cannot f oh I found a piece. Yep, yeah, okay, I'm finding the pieces now. Gonna grab it. I'm gonna be like Walter White, and I have to make sure I found all the pieces. So I'm gonna worry that the CPU is gonna attack me and slash me with a broken piece of die. Actually, we should be able to make the orientation based on... I oh know, the patterning's different. That is interesting. So, the world's hardest jigsaw puzzle. Well that there, you can sort of see the markings, it's probably where the, eh, maybe not. Maybe that's where you belong. Oh well, I think we're going to have to leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, multi-layer silicon. Yeah, I thought it might have just been an impression of one side on the other, but it's not. Yeah, it's actually yeah, multi-layer silicon there. Okay, well, damn, so much for that. I am going to call it a night since it is 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm upset. I mean, that's it's a whole $15 worth of Dana board cheaper than AliExpress, still better quality than AliExpress, but I really had hoped I would get myself a high-end 165, so that's a bit of a bummer. The upside is, like, if I was really desperate, I can, you know, move the 8 gigs RAM to another one. The SMC, everything else should be okay. But yeah, she dead. It's dead. I'm out of here. You will take care, and um, as usual with the departing message, if you didn't like what you saw in the video, let me know in the comments and I'll duly ignore you. If you did, give me a thumbs up, try and share, subscribe if you want. We usually have uh, repair streams a couple of times a week, and every now and then we do have an uploaded edit edited video. Anyway, I'm out of here. Thank you all. I'll see you next time. You'll take care.